Y'all got so quiet, I got nervous. <laughs> Please don't do that. My goodness. Uh, we got a few minutes, but I want to I wanna spread the word that uh, we, have a ba- we have baptisms this Sunday. Praise God. Let's give God praise. Amen. Um, I, so I want to take some time out to talk about baptisms. Um, just, just a minute or so. If you haven't been baptized, please do so. Uh, cannot stress this enough. Um, as, as I was preparing the message uh, today, I was telling Brother Aaron upstairs that um, I thought it was halfway through, Pastor. Halfway through. And you know how this goes, Brother Joey. Uh, I'm just chugging along and Holy Spirit says, that was for you. <laughs> and I said, okay, Lord, well, what do we do now? You know, and come on, Brother David. And he said, just, he said, get on your face and just pray and, you know, just, just bless me and I'll give you the word. Um, but then he said, before we move forward, I want to talk about baptism. And um, this is what Holy Spirit wanted me to stress to you. If Lord Jesus Christ himself got baptized, how important do you think it is for you to be baptized? Can I get an amen? amen. I mean, I, I'm the kind of brother that if it's in the Bible... I believe it. Uh, Bottom line, that's the only book I believe. Praise God. It's the only book. Amen. And I say this to you because I believe with all my heart that when you decide to be baptized in Holy Spirit, God will bless you beyond your comprehension. Because you are displaying unto the world, to every soul, that Jesus Christ is my Lord. I died in him and I am resurrected now in Holy Spirit. I belong eternally to my Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen? So please do so. Please be baptized. Praise God. Um, The Women's Walk 115 starts April 28th to May 1st. Um, Holy Spirit presence and power is guaranteed. Can I get an amen? Amen. (laughs) It is guaranteed. So um, how many of you have been on the Emmaus Walk? Glory be to God. Look around, family. Almost everybody, amen, about 90%. Now, for the 10% of you, rejoice because, ladies, I pray. My beloved sisters, I pray, and please pray. Ask God, do you want me to be on this walk? The moment he says yes, sign up, and guess what? You're not backing out. Because I will warn you, the closer it gets to that walk, the enemy's going to try to do whatever he can. How many agrees with me? The enemy's going to try to do whatever he can to stop you from going on that walk. So please go on that walk. And once again, it's on the end of April 28th and May 1st. Amen? Uh, The title of this worship service is You're Invited. Amen? You're Invited. How many of you ever got an invitation? Right? Isn't it nice when you get that invitation? Because when you you receive that invitation, it's like, oh, well, that person was thinking of me. Right? They want me to be there, to, 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 you know, participate. And the celebration, right? And I love this part because when you talk about being invited, this is normally what it looks like. To, when, where, and RSVP. Amen? So God is so sweet because he said, I want to I address this to my holy church. And this is what he says. To eternity. Amen? When? Next half an hour. Where? heaven. And of course, the RSVP part is please respond, right? Please respond. And we just signed it. Open Arms Church. Amen. Amen. Open Arms Church. Um, I pray that in this next uh, whatever time we have, above all, I pray that the trumpet goes off. How awesome would it be for that trumpet to sound? And here we are worshiping Lord Jesus Christ already. That's a big, big prayer of mine. Um, I ask for your prayers as well, too. There's been a there's been a lot of distractions here lately, amen. I'm going to get something off my heart before I pray because Holy Spirit said confess it. May I? Um, as you guys know, we have Sunday morning worship service, Monday night Bible study, Tuesday night I am recovered, and here we are Wednesday evening. But yet I still have people that don't come to church regularly, aren't members here, they belong to another church, which is fine, I'm called to minister the gospel but their expectation is let's fellowship let's hang out let's listen guys 
there's a purpose why we come together as much as we do here. And I'm going to start telling people, if you don't come to church, forget about hanging out outside of, outside of church. Can you get an amen? I don't need to hang out. You hear what I'm saying? I don't got time to hang out. I know I'm hurting some people in this room. I got no time to, to, to go do stuff. I don't got no time. I'm busy. Amen? And, and I expect you to be busy for the Lord. But here in my heart, if you expect me to cater to you from what you want, and you, it's not going to work. So you ever, get, you ever get broken up and the person said to you, it's not you, it's me? It's not you, it's me. Okay? Anybody? <laughs> you feel me? Anybody, anybody here that want to just waste time and go do stuff but not take God seriously and come fellowship with his holy people, get into the Bible study on Monday evenings, come to I Am Recovered, right? How many of you are trying, how many of you are truly trying to come to as many as possible? You know what? Look around, and it's true. The ones that raise their hands, it's true. Because we're seeing you more and more because God knows you're putting in a fight. I'm going to try to come as much as I can. Now let me ask you something. The more you build that momentum in coming, how amazing and how gooder and gooder does your life get? Amen? Amen? Now, let's ask, now let's talk about the flip side of that. What happens when you stop and you miss one? Maybe you get over it, right? But see, I already see Brother Craig going, don't do it. I already see Sister Lisa saying, don't do it. And guess what? They had an emergency last night that they had to attend to. That's why they weren't here at I Am Recovered. But what I'm saying, family, is that the devil's purpose in this world is to draw your attention away from Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm encouraging you. Here at your church, Open Arms Community Church, we love you. We want to get together as often as possible. Amen? But here in my heart, I'm not the kind of brother that just wants to go hang out. Sometimes it's just a fight just to get home and just rest and be with my wife. So please remember, it's not you. It's me. Amen? <laughs> it's, 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 it's time we break up. It's not you. It's me. Amen? You still love me? Hey, I love you. Oh, praise God. Love you. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. That, Father God, you want us 24-7 beyond that, Father God. And that's why, Lord Jesus Christ, you came. You died and saved our souls for us. You did everything in your salvation that you freely gave to us, that you shared with us. Your glory. And in your glory, we have you, Father God, 24-7 a day. And, Father, forgive me. Forgive me in emotion. Forgive me in pride when I try to feel that in somebody else's life just cause so I want to feel good. Or just because I feel guilty. Rebuke that, Heavenly Father. You are God Almighty. And you have all the glory, honor, and praise. And we want you, Father God, first. We want to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then we will love each other, Father God. It's not the other way around. So, Holy Spirit, I thank you so much for your anointing, your presence, Heavenly Father. Father, just bless us with your, your wisdom, Heavenly Father. Bless us, Father God, as, as, as you, you preach and teach this word in being invited. And it's in Jesus' name and all God's beloved said. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. We have young adults back there in that little room over there. If you guys, some of you guys were wondering why, why are they going in there? You know, nobody's in trouble. It's a, it's a young adults group. Amen. And you're, you're, you're more than welcome. Um, this is, I want to say, the third week or maybe a month into it so far. So um, if Holy Spirit tugs at your heart to go, as always, be obedient and just go. Amen. Um, yes, we will miss you. Yes, I'll get crunchy, but I will get over it. I'm a big boy. Amen. Let's get into this. Say with me, you're invited. Most of tonight is going to be in Acts 6. And we're going to be not only not only reading about Stephen, but as we worship Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit is going to teach us. And Holy Spirit is going to convict us. Say with me, convict me, Lord. And the beauty is about his conviction is that if you repent, what I mean about repent is, Father, I'm sorry. I heard you. I felt that. 
I'm sorry. I heard what I, I heard what you said through through Brother Joey, and 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 that cut me. But Father God, I don't want you just to cut me. I want you to cut it all. Can you get an amen? I don't want to hurt you, Father. Amen. So we're gonna go really deep into Stephen and his relationship with God, and how Father God used him in such a mighty way. Praise God. Hmm, hallelujah. Are y'all excited to be here tonight? Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Isn't it beautiful? If you don't think you hear from Holy Spirit or speak in tongues or speak through Holy Spirit, say this with me. Jesus Christ is Lord. You know what the Bible says? That you said that, that only comes from Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's say it again. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Let's do it again. Jesus Christ is Lord. Anthony, are you saying it? Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. You got the Darth Vader mask on. I love it. I do. I, I like it. I like, no, I'm not, forgive me. I'm not, I like it. It, look, it looks nice. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> I love that laugh. <laughs> Say it with me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory be God. I love you, brother. Okay. I don't know why Holy Spirit says I can't move on yet. Anybody's carrying some heaviness tonight? There's healing here, amen? Something that you're struggling with. I can't start yet. Holy Spirit said to rebuke it, to anoint you in oil and rebuke it, and you'll see a miracle manifest. I just need to know who. I'm asking Holy Spirit. Huh? Amen. Pastor, can you come up? Let's give God praise, amen. And God says, we don't need to give him with that attitude. He's 88 years old, broke, dying, and you got an attitude, God forgives you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, you've already done the fighting for us. So I'm praying right now for Kaylee. I'm praying, dear Lord, that you give her peace, you give her comfort. Hallelujah. And God, you're the, <laughs> you've got all this under control. Yes, I know she's tired. We're all tired. Yes. But God, look how tired you had to go through. Yes, and God, let us step up now. Let yes, Kay step up. Give her strength. Yes, give her the ability. Yes. And, and Lord, she does a lot. I know more than a lot. But, God, you're with her. You're going to pick her up. You're going to carry her. You're going to help her. You say put all of our burdens on her. So, God, she's laying her burdens now on you, Lord. So, God, pick her up and carry her, just like you did in the sand, Lord. God, we love you and we praise you. And we thank you for the healing right now. And, Kay, in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. And I knew it was spirit. Woo. That's rebuke already. Thank you, church family, for praying. Lord, help me be the kind of person my dog thinks I am. <laughs> yeah, not mine. If you were here last night, Mom McKay, I was telling our, our, our family, our beloved family, that uh, yesterday morning my dog walked beside. I was, all right, I'm not going to be gross, but I was in the bathroom. And he walks by the door, and he's like, And I kid you not, my jaw hit the floor, and I'm like, what in the world was that? And then I went on to say, you got to pay bills? I mean, you know, like, is, is life really that hard? I can't eat meat, right? God told me so. So for over two years now, I've been what the world calls a vegan. I don't like that term. But I don't eat meat, and I don't eat no dairy products. All I eat are plants and fake animals. You go to... You go, you go to Kroger, you go to Kroger, they got a fake animal section. It's not, it's not chicken patties, it's chick on <laughs> tofu. Yep, yep, I wore that out. I wore that out. Now I can't even look, now I can't even look at tofu. Our beloved sister, listen, I was like, uh, I told Trish, oh yeah, this is good. This is all right. After a month, I'm like, I 
I can't eat meat. But you know what Trish does? Y'all ready for some tattletaling? Listen, y'all poked the bear and now you're going to hear me. <laughs> Trish buys chicken and she bakes it in the house and feeds the dog chicken. And so you know, I'm, I'm sitting there with the dogs like, can I get some of this too? Can, can I get some of that too? So now, there you go. That's why the dog looks at me like that and goes, <laughs> hey, <laughs> he rolled over. <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all need to help me, okay? We need to, get, we need to do work. Amen? Y'all need to help me. Praise God. Say his name, Stephen. Stephen. Now, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. This is you. You have this anointing. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as, as it was called, Jews of Syrian and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. Let me ask you something. Does anything good come out of arguing? Yes. Can I get an amen? amen? Will we be the bigger person and just say, you're right. God bless you. I love you. Move on. See, there's three people that said. The rest of y'all went. You did like an Elvis impression. Your lips started like. Don't be cruel. To a heart that's true. I don't want no other love, baby, it's just you I'm thinking of. Get Eddie Miles and run for his money, huh? <laughs> Lord, help us. Yo, but seriously, some of y'all, you guys started quenching. Your lips started quivering. Do you always have to be right? Hmm. It's easy right now to say, I don't know, I don't. But then the moment someone argues with you, where do you stand, right? You see, Lord Jesus Christ is our example. He suffered, so we should suffer. Sometimes suffering means zip it. Zip it. It don't matter if you're right. Did you know you could be 100% right, but at the same time be 100% wrong? Let me explain. Holy Spirit says shut it, and you still prove your point. And you prove to everybody you were right. But God said, shut it. Can you get an amen? amen? Nothing good comes out of arguing. If you're wrestling or battling with that, it's pride. I beg you before the night's over, bring it to the altar. Daddy wants it. Can you get an amen? Dad, Daddy wants it. Daddy's like, give it to me, and I will bless you with patience. I will bless you with, with wisdom. I will bless you with clarity. I'll bless you with peace. Amen. Nothing good comes out of arguing. Believe me as your beloved brother. I always have religious nuts come up to me and want to talk about some things in the Bible. The very first thing I ask them is, before I answer you, is this to glorify God or glorify you? You know how quick of a rebuke that is? You want to ask me questions, that's fine. Are we worshiping? Are we glorifying Lord Jesus? Are we blessing Holy Spirit? Are we both going to get something really good or out of this? Or are you trying to trap me so that we can argue? Again, amen? Y'all got quiet quick. Say it with me, do not argue. Does anything good come out of arguing? No. My goodness, my wife taught me that 20 years ago. Amen? Amen. I say you're right. <laughs> I wasn't even saved back then. You're right. Nothing good comes out of arguing. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. Let's go. Oh, let's, um, I didn't read that last part. But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. You're a beloved child of God. You have the anointing of the Holy Spirit in your life. You worship God. Now listen to what I said. You worship God. What does this worship mean, Brother Joey? That you're giving God all you got. Can you get a hallelujah? hallelujah? See, this is between you and God, Brother Craig. It's not me to judge. You don't judge nobody. Can you get an amen? You're not in the same position as anybody in here. It's your own personal relationship with the Lord, which means how often do you thank him? How often do you think of him? How often do you run things by him? 
Can I get an amen? When you do this continuously, oh, hallelujah, get ready. Get ready. I promise you, your life is going to get gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen? You see, Lord Jesus Christ changed worship. Worship used to be just show up with the sacrifice. You better make sure that sacrifice is perfect. Now remember what we recall is that there's some people that love that sacrifice. I'm just going to be bold and say that would be Trish. If we were in the Old Testament, Old Covenant, we'd be in line with our sacrifice. You would hear Trish two miles away. Ah! <laughs> but I love Fluffy. I love her. Ah! Y'all think I'm playing? You know it's true. Many of you know it. Come on now, Pastor, right? You already know, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Right? And it's going to get to the point where you actually have to come to the part where you got to let go of Fluffy. And Fluffy's going to get sacrificed to the one and only perfect lamb. Amen? But see, I'm saying this because to Trish, she has that connection with the sacrifice. Right? She loves that sacrifice. But what about me? What if I don't even care? What if I'm a rich guy and all I do is tell somebody, I want you to pick the best one. I don't have a name for it, never even seen it before, but on the day of the sacrifice, right, on the day of atonement, come on now. I go get that sacrifice and I just go, give it to them. They said, good job. Is that worship? But guess what? Back then before Lord Jesus Christ it was. This is why people hated Lord Jesus Christ when he introduced God as a father and a good and perfect father that loves me. Such a love that's so unconditional that it doesn't matter what you do. He will renew everything because he's so deeply in love with you. And Lord Jesus Christ showed it to us and he performed it on that cross. Amen. Say it with me. Get ready. They secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified. That's what's happening today. Ask pastor. He'll tell you. It's not only happened to him. It's happened to me. Ask my elders. Our elders, amen? People will lie about you in pride to draw you in any way they can. To draw you in the flesh? Yeah, come on. Get at me. Say something. Do something. This is how the devil works. Trying to, right? But if you have Holy Spirit, God will expose every evil thing. And you have such peace because you know, Father God, you will bring out the truth. Amen. And I'm going to walk out of here not even smelling like smoke. Hallelujah. God will expose everything. Amen. So they produced false witnesses who testified. This fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen and they saw his face was like the face of an angel. Say with me, I'm an angel. I believe and declare that when I see you, I'm not just looking at your shell, I'm looking at Holy Spirit. How many of you can actually feel the presence of God as soon as you enter his building? Show of hands. Amen. It gets gooder and gooder than that. How many of you feel the presence of God when you greet your brother and sister and you hug them? Isn't that beautiful? Amen. And pray for family and friends, our community. Pray for those. I'm calling in a mighty harvest in Jesus' name. I'm not just calling in the lost souls. I'm calling in the souls that fell away. I'm calling in the souls that they feel it's not important to come to church no more. That's evil. Right? What did Lord Jesus Christ pay for? Let's rewind. Let's 
Lord Jesus Christ paid for a relationship. Old Testament, Old Covenant, you just bring your sacrifice, right? And guess what? You couldn't even come into the present. Why? There was a high priest that only his presence was allowed. Let me ask you something. Who is our high priest? Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. He is our high priest. And it's with his blood. It's his sacrifice. It's his perfection. It's what he did that he tore that veil in half. So that anybody who calls on his holy name can go into the presence of God Almighty and just sit there and just be with the Father and saying, Father, I love you. And he says, I love you, my beloved child. Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> Do you have that relationship with God right now as you sit here? Or is your relationship with God how much you know about the Bible? Is your relationship with God how many times you come to church? Is your relationship with God how good you think you are? Huh? Or is your relationship based on what he did? Mm, now get ready. Because your relationship is going to get deeper and deeper. Amen? I love this picture here in Acts 7. In Acts 7... Because he's just, we just read through it. And um, ju just to fast forward, because we can't go through all of Acts 7, because there's just so much. But as you know, at this point, they've captured Stephen. They devised all these lies. They got everybody together. And they drug him. And now he's answering to the Supreme Court. He's answering to the big wigs of the religion, the religious people. The reason for this picture right here is just so you can capture as far as his image. I love the way Holy Spirit teaches us. I'm a visual type of person. Amen. Men, men pretty much are. Women have more discernment, praise God, and more, um, y'all are creative. You guys got just, meh, just all the gifts. <laughs> Beloved daughters of God. Y'all are so gifted and anointed, amen. Us men are like, oh, God, see it. Ain't that the truth? I'm not making fun of us, but that's just the way we are, right? You know? I have a lot of brothers like, show me. Okay. But here in Acts 7, I need, I need to just touch on this. Brother Stephen, we have to make think one thing clear, one thing sure, is that he was filled with Holy Spirit. And here in my heart, he was going and showing Every miracle, everything that you could possibly do through the anointing of God, he was doing it, performing it. His job, check this out, Sister Virginia, was the head of the food pantry. Yep. And the reason why is because he was overlooked. He spoke Greek, but he was a Jew. So now we're getting deeper. Because he's a Jew, and he had all the traditional laws. Before Jesus, but here he is now with the anointing of Holy Spirit, and he can minister to those who were always excluded in the past. Isn't that beautiful? He can reach out to people that Ju most Jews can't even talk to because they don't know how to speak Greek. So he was very eloquent in that, and Holy Spirit used his gifts. And in Acts 7, he makes a stand before all these religious people, and he goes through the Bible. Read it yourself tonight. I pray you do. Or sometime this week. Do whatever Holy Spirit tells you to do. But I'm telling you this. He goes from Abraham. He talks about Isaac. He talks about Jacob. He talks about Moses. He talks about Joseph or Potiphar. He talks about all these godly men and everything that they've done and everything that was going. But then he always said to them, we always fall short. We're always hurting God. We're always resisting him. I don't know how much more the Bible I have to tell you. And he does it all in, the, all in this, well, in my Bible, it's this much of text. <laughs> but he, he says it in this much text, and he just machine guns, right? Because here all these people, 
that are considered the religious of the religious, the most high, judging him, and he's reiterating to them, I know what you know. I know your traditions. I know the God you think you serve, but here I am telling you, I serve the God, the living God, because he, he gave us Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? I love this because you can see him standing in that court, and we're going to pick up here in 51 and 53. This is what he's summarizing now. That's why you can understand why we had to fast forward because we're already on verse 51. That's why I say when you have time, study. You could feel the passion of Holy Spirit. You could feel his passion just bubbling on the inside of Stephen. And here's Stephen. Here's Stephen. He did nothing wrong, family. All he's doing is worshiping Lord Jesus Christ and spreading the gospel. I pray just like what we're trying to do every day. But guess what? We're a spoiled generation. Ain't it sad? We have people leaving church because they got upset. You didn't say hi to me. You preached a message and you looked at me wrong. You preach the subject and it just hurt me and my family. Is really that what we came down to? I rebuke that in Jesus' name. You see, when Stephen was preaching all of this and saying all this and making a stand before the Sanhedrin and telling them that there is a God, but the way that they're worshiping God is no longer. That we must worship God through the only way, the only truth, the only life. John 14, 6, amen? His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When you, when, when, when you worship God this way, then Holy Spirit will bless you in that, in, in that intimacy that God has been longing for since the creation of the garden. But the truth is, how many of us are intimate with God? Huh? Don't make me cross my eyes. I, I want to look at every one of you. How many of you are truly intimate with God? Or are you intimate with yourself? Are you intimate with your, your education? Are you intimate with your scriptures? Huh? Because see, the last time I checked with what you're intimate with, Sister Stephanie, what you're intimate with, Brother William, what you're intimate with, Brother Craig, what you're intimate with, Brady Household, whatever that you're intimate with, you will manifest within you. And that very presence will overflow and it will take form in you, in your house, and around you. Can I get an amen? amen. And I pray it's Jesus. Can I get a hallelujah? I pray it's Jesus. So check this out. So Stephen just got fed up with everything. And I love this here in verse 51. That's why we start right here. Amen? This is what he had to say to all of them. I wish I could say things like this. I got an elder right there. He's like, don't you do it. I'm just confessing to you. I wish I could say things like this. But there, it's in the word right now, and I'm just going to read it. So, mm. This is what he had to say. You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. I know that I'm speaking to somebody here today. You know about Holy Spirit, you've studied about Holy Spirit, you think you know Holy Spirit, but you don't even hear from God. Father God said, will you confess that tonight? Confess it to myself, an elder. Confess it. And watch what God will do. Can I get an amen? amen. Was, there, was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not prosecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. Stephen is telling all who is somebody in the religious community. He's saying these words. You want to talk about, oh my gosh, this guy done lost it. Could you imagine? Because their expectation was for him to submit. Their expectation is to intimidate him because he's facing death. 
But when you have, hallelujah, when you have Holy Spirit, God Almighty will overtake you from the inside and you will be bold and courageous in every area of your life that you will stand firm and you will not back up. You will go forward and you will not get tired. You know why? It's his blood. It's his power. It's his strength that will run through you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Say it with me, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And don't you love it? He's telling them, you guys are are all resisting Holy Spirit. See, this is the beauty about being a beloved child of God. When Holy Spirit lives on the inside and you have that relationship with God, no one can tell you different. Can you get an amen? Amen. We don't judge nobody. I've been at churches where they don't even want to talk about Holy Spirit. I've been invited to speak at churches, and the pastor would ask me, can you, can you not say Holy Spirit so much? I'd say, no, I won't speak. Well, can you just tie it down? Nope. I've been in churches, Trish will tell you, I'm preaching the message. I'm just doing what Holy Spirit says. Half the church will get up and walk out. Half of it. This world is getting to the point Or give me everything that feels good. Give me the charismatic preacher. Give me the big screens and the fancy building. Give me all the programs and give me, give me, give me, give me. But the moment you speak, the Godhead of Holy Spirit and his responsibility that Father gave him to live in you, to teach you, to encourage you. To convict you, to show you the glory, to tell you when you're wrong, for you to submit, amen? The moment that Holy Spirit comes, I'll tell you right now, this world doesn't want it. Say it with me, praise God. God. We're here here. at Open Arms Community Church. Amen, give God praise, hallelujah. (laughs) When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at them. Y'all don't know what Nash and Teeth? How mad you got to be at somebody when you go? I've had people do that to me. You know, he's just biting on. Well, you got to be mad to do that to somebody. Right? Have you tried it? Try it. Try, try biting down you. That's like anger, right? And that's what they were doing, doing towards Stephen. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, full of what? Say it with me, that's me. me. Amen. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just for this moment, so we can see this in real time, it's about to happen. It's about to happen. Amen. The trumpet's about to go off. Hallelujah. And I need you to look at this. Here's Stephen standing there. And you could already hear the rustle of people's feet moving around. And they're actually going to go get the rock and the stone. I need you to put yourself in his position right now. That he could hear their sandals. But what does he choose to do? He chooses to look up. How many of you is God ministering to you tonight that no matter what your situation or circumstance is looking, no matter how you feel, no matter how impossible it may look, sometimes Father God is just asking, will you just look up? Will you look up? Remember that this this world, the devil's job is to try to take your eyes off of Lord Jesus. And when he is successful at that, it can happen in a split second. The worry, anxiety, why me, what's going on, why is this happening, right? Don't the devil love it when we're in that, in that little, like chasing your tail, right? And Father's, Father's just saying, look up, amen? And he said, look, he said, I see heaven open, the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. 
At this, they covered their ears. This is the world we live in right now. Oh, I know Jesus. Oh, I don't need to come to church. I, 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 I listen on the radio and um, I watch it on TV. Even what I just showed you, through the Holy Spirit, of the Old Covenant, Old Testament, and only God's chosen. It wasn't for Gentiles now. You couldn't be a Gentile and have Fluffy on a leash and go, here you go. Are you kidding me? You're not part of the bloodline. Can you say that with me? Bloodline. But who dripped every bit of blood for us? Whose blood runs through our veins? Hallelujah. And now we have the godly bloodline. Can you get an amen? And they were yelling at the top of their voices. They all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. And you can see this picture right here. Say this with me, you're invited. While they were stoning him, while they were stoning him, Stephen prayed. And this is what our beloved brother prayed. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. But guess what? He did not stop there. Because remember, he's a beloved child of God and Holy Spirit lives in him. So he's just showing you the two commandments right here, right now. He's calling on the Lord Jesus Christ and he's saying, Father, receive my spirit. And it's only through Christ my Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Say his name, Lord Jesus Christ. And look at this. He says, then he, fell on his, then he fell on his knees and he cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against him. Showing I love my neighbors like I love myself. That I, I'm about to be stoned to death. But all that matters is what you did on that cross for me. When he had said this, he fell asleep. You see, this whole story about Stephen that we went through, and I pray that it's blessed you, just to not only read, but the anointing of Holy Spirit to bless us, to rest on us. He's in us to teach us how intimate one can be with God. How Stephen displayed the gospel alive. Amen? Now remember, in... In Acts 7, he, he went through the Bible and he called out everything that they were accusing and calling out all these names, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joshua, Joseph, you name it, they were calling it out. But it came down to, does God know you? Because I'm going to tell you, God knows Stephen. And it's so beautiful because when you think about what Stephen did in just this story and in his life, here is an open invitation. Even the ones that grab the boulder and raised it up above their head and smashed his skull in, they even heard Lord, forgive them. And I know with all my heart that everyone that casted that stone and beat them heard. And what God is trying to deposit in us tonight, are we that invitation? Are we that invitation for family, for friends, that we can show them that we don't always have to be right? That we can show them that we have a love that is beyond what this world calls love. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. That we have forgiveness in our heart that we're not going to judge what you've been through, what you're doing. But we're going to show you that not only does God forgive you, but I, I don't even look at that sin because I look at God's glory in you. Are you going to be that invitation for God? 
that every soul that looks on you, they want. They see the invitation, William, that, man, I know you, I know what you've been through, but yet you still serve this God. And you're such a good man. And I know you say all the time, it's not me, it's him. What is that? An invitation. An invitation, amen. So in summary, you're invited to be loved by God. When, say it with me right now. Where, say it with me right here. And the RSVP is God is waiting. Stand up on your feet with me, praise God. By the grace of God, I know there's many of us. Elder Brad, if you don't mind, can you turn down the lights? We're all really tight here. I, I know that you guys. But maybe there's something that you just want to declare to the Lord, confess to the Lord. Whatever it is, I'm going to ask you in these next couple of songs. The altar here at God's church, Holy Spirit's church, is always open. You never have to wait for the preacher to stop preaching. Please rebuke that. Just like Brother Chris is displaying in obedience, you just come. But what I want to encourage you in, don't let this moment slip away. If you need something from God, let us know. I'm sure that he'll fulfill it at the altar. But if you need, your, if you need just an elder to pray for you or anybody else, please just let us know. Amen.